Hello, today I'll be talking about 10 bad metal albums from my collection. These albums will be in no particular order, but keep in mind these are just my personal opinions. You don't have to agree with them, but feel free to let me know your thoughts on these albums in the comment section below. But we will be first diving into Metalcore with this album here from All That Remains, Madness. And this is one of their later albums, and to me, definitely a contender for maybe being their worst album. It would either be this one or the order of things, but... This album sees the band continuing in their more radio rock slash radio metal direction. The album starts off in an okay manner with Safe House, which is maybe the heaviest song on here, or, or one of the heaviest. I mean, basically just generic chugs, but still an okay song, though. And then again, you also have the title track, which I think is also alright. A decent radio rock, radio metal song. But you, the more you get into the album, the, more, the worse it gets. I mean, Trust and Believe I think is okay, but you definitely get some of the band's worst material by a landslide on here, like Back to You, which is sounds like some sappy radio country song that's just not something I'd want to hear from All That Remains. If I'm Honest uh, shows the band on, shows the band going for the more melodic side. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I like it when All That Remains goes more melodic, but with this song, just doesn't quite work for me and then i think halo is another decent track off here probably one of the best songs on here but you also have the the cover of the thunder rules which i'm not a big fan of that cover at all i know that cover does have its share of fans but for me not a fan i'm not even a fan of the original either so there you go but yeah madness by all that remains definitely not great De easily one of the band's worst but now we're moving into one of the big four with Anthrax, Volume 8, The Threat Is Real. So yeah, this is from the John Bush era. When it comes to the John Bush era, I think Sound of White Noise is great. And We've Come For You All, I like that album. I wouldn't say that I love the album, but I would say that again, I do like it. You do get some pretty good stuff on there, like What Doesn't Die and Refuse To Be Denied, Safe Home. Tile Track's pretty good too, pretty good too off that album. But at the same time, this this era off also offers Psalm 442 in this album, and this album and Psalm 442 are really the biggest reasons why I don't understand how people can prefer this this era or these albums over albums like Spreading the Disease or Among the Living or even Persistence of Time. But I mean, I mean again, you like what you like. Of course, it's all subjective, but. I think the album does start off in a decent manner with the first three songs, Crush, Catharsis, and Inside Out. Inside Out probably being my favorite off of here and maybe the most well-known song on here. I think that song has a nice groove to it. I think the music video is also pretty cool too. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out if you're a fan of the song. But after Inside Out, the album pretty much goes off the cliff for me. I mean, P and V, you get Cowbell in there and uh, yeah, no. And you also have Toast to the Extras, which sees the band going in, in a more country direction. And yeah, John Bush's vocals in that song kind of great on my ears, to be honest. I mean, it's just bad and easily one of the band's worst songs. And then things get more and more unremarkable as the, once you get into the second half. If I remember correctly, Dimebag Daryl uh, contributes to a couple songs on here. I believe... I think Born Again Idiot is one of the songs, but yeah, at the end of the day, pretty bad album from Anthrax. The album does have its fans though. I've seen those fans online, but I'm not a big fan of Volume 8 though. The next we'll be moving to one of the big names in progressive metal with Dream Theater with their album The Astonishing, which most people would probably consider their worst or at least one of their worst. And yeah, I'm definitely no different. This, I mean, I mean, this. There, there's no secret that this album is just very bloated and just, of course, way too long. I mean, good on them for trying to do something different, and and you can you can you can do you can notice the ambition going on here, but there's there isn't really much here that really stands out, and even some of the songs start to blend together a little bit. I mean, Our New World, I think, is a decent song, but. Whenever I'm in the mood for a dream theater, this is always the album that I reach for last. But, yeah. 
not nothing really interesting not really much of interesting going on here within the songs themselves again songs blend together and i would hate to go listen to this from front to back ever again but yeah dream theater the astonishing definitely an album that i'll definitely continue passing on the band themselves sound fine but still at the end of the day not a very good dream theater album i think they've the band has definitely done better than that but now we're moving into the world of melodic death metal, definitely one of the leading names in the genre. With one of their later albums, uh, we got Siren Charms by In Flames. The band decides to go in a more alt metal direction, and yeah, no. I mean, of course, there's there is some alt metal that I do like, but when when In Flames does it, uh, yeah, it just does not work for me. You get more clean vocals this time around. And I mean, of course, you do have your mellow death growls here and there, but again, more more alt metal than mellow death this time around. And I'm not really a fan of really any of the songs on here, to be honest. You know, yeah, Rusted Nail, Through Oblivion, Everything's Gone. I'm just not a fan of really anything on here. And when it comes to Anders' his clean vocals, his clean vocals or his singing can be very hit or miss for me, especially on this album. Sometimes I think his singing sounds actually pretty good, while other times I think he sounds maybe a bit too whiny, or I'm just not a fan of the way that he's sounding. But again, he does have his moments where he does sound pretty good, but this album for me, easy one of the band's worst. And the 2010s in general were just not that great for In Flames. I'm still not a fan of Sounds of a Playground Fading. Has maybe two or three songs that I like off of it, but that's really about it. I'm also not a fan of Battles. I actually liked Eye of the Mask when it came out, but my opinion on that album has definitely lowered over time. But for me, this album is maybe their biggest turd in their discography, in their discography. But now we're moving into Iron Maiden with Virtual Eleven, diving into the Blaze Bailey era. I like The X Factor. I am a defender of that album. I mean, that album, yeah, it may be a bit more tame, a bit more grounded compared to, of course, albums like Number of the Beast, Power Slave, and stuff like that, of course. But I still like The X Factor. Yeah, again, a bit darker, a bit more, a bit more tame, but I do like, I do like that album though. You do get some solid tracks off of there, like Lord of the Flies and Sign of the Cross, Man on the Edge, Judgment of Heaven, and some others, but this album I can't defend. For me, it's easily the band's worst. I mean, I do like the Future Real. I know not everyone's big on that song, and I'm sure I might maybe maybe I'll get some flack for liking that song, but I don't care. I like Future Real. I think it's a fairly catchy Iron Maiden song. Not, of course, not one of the best. Nowhere near one of the best, but still a solid way to open up the album, I'd say. But then you also have The Angel and the Gambler, which is easily one of the band's worst songs, and also way too long, which would be which would be a big issue when it comes to some of their later albums. But Lightning Strikes Twice, I think is also all right. And then I think, then you also have The Klansman, which I think is easily one of the strongest songs on here. But yeah, Virtual Eleven, definitely a bad album for sure. And easily one of the band's worst. But next we're moving to Judas Priest with Demolition. Diving into the Tim Ripper Owens era. I actually like Jugulator. Uh, that's probably one of their heaviest albums. And yeah, maybe sure some of the lyrics off that album are maybe not great, but I think the lyrics on this album are probably worse. Uh, for proof, you can definitely look to songs like Machine Man or Cyberface or maybe Metal Messiah. Metal Messiah showing the band uh, having some, well, w yeah, with Metal Messiah, you can definitely hear some new metal isms, and it's 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 just cringe. I mean, you can definitely no notice those new metal isms, such as in the verses of that song, and it it just hasn't aged well. You can definitely tell it's of its time. But yeah, moving into the lyrics, you definitely get some of the band's worst songwriting by a landslide. I mean, with Machine Man, you have that line, yeah, y'all. You've all got loser tattooed all on your face, and then you have Cyberface where you have that line, "Beware of his megabytes" or something stupid like that. I mean, 
really the only songs I think are somewhat tolerable or decent off the album are really the first two songs, Machine Man and One on One. I mean, One on One is, is a pretty repetitive song, but still, I, I still kind of dig it though. But yeah, Demolition, pretty bad album. Definitely one of the band's worst, along with Nostradamus. That album also sucks in my opinion. That album does have its defenders, but for me, I think it's poo-poo. But now we're moving into Machine Head with Supercharger. So yeah, this was during Machine Head's new metal era, and I like the Burning Red. I am a defender of the Burning Red, but this album I can't defend. I mean, well, one, you, ha you definitely have your share of filler. That's There's no questioning that, but... Really, the only songs I like off this album are Bulldozer and Crashing Around You. But, yeah, the rest of the album you can really take or leave. I mean, American High, All In Your Head, Blank Generation. I mean, again, pretty bad stuff. Definitely some of the band's worst work, for sure. Along with Catharsis. I mean, yeah, Supercharger and Catharsis are probably the only albums I dislike from Machine Head. I mean, I know some people are not big on the Burning Red, but I like the Burning Red, though. But yeah, Supercharger, definitely a, a turd of an album. But now we're moving back to another, back to the big four, except where we will be going, going into Megadeth with Super Collider. I mean, I know a lot of people don't like Risk, but honestly, I'd rather listen to Risk over Super, after, not, not Supercharger, Super Collider. Because at least Risk is a bit more interesting, a bit more daring. I mean, of course, the, 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 the dare part of that album is, didn't really pay off that well. But at least Risk has maybe, I don't know, maybe two or three okay songs. But this album, I mean, I like Keymaker. I think Keymaker is a decent banger of a song. And then I do like Dance in the Rain, but the rest of the album I can pretty much take or leave. But you also have the title track Supercharger, which sounds like generic dad rock and easily one of the band's worst songs. I'm also not a big fan of Burn with the whole bird baby bird thing. I'm just like, oh, no. I'm I'm also not super big on The Blackest Crow and uh, Beginning of Sorrow. I mean, or Off the Edge. I mean, for me, this is maybe the band's worst album. But they would redeem themselves with the next album, uh, Dystopia, though. But next we're moving to one of the biggest names in the world of death metal with Morbid Angel. With their album, Lou Divinum and Sanus. I see a lot of people mock even the title. I mean, one of my favorites is uh, Illum Aluminum Anus, which I think one of the guys from Thralls of Metal said, uh, came up with that name. But yeah, this album is just... I, I mean, it's definitely up there as probably one of the worst metal albums of all time, and for good reason. I mean, even some of the lyrics are just very amateur. I mean, especially songs like Radicals. I mean, I mean the mix of industrial metal and death metal is just. I mean, especially with this being this album seeing the return of David Vincent, you'd think they would come up with something way better than this, but I guess not. I mean. Let's see, Existo Vulgore, however you pronounce that. I think that song is okay, but and maybe and I think Nevermore I think is decent enough, but again, there's there isn't really anything I find myself returning to anyways. I mean maybe a couple songs I think are okay-ish, but that's really it though. At the end of the day, still a stinker all these years later for sure and Again, the, even the more industrial side of the album just doesn't work for me. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I do like some industrial metal, but with how Morbid Angel utilized industrial metal in that album, it just didn't work for me. And now for the final album for this video, we have Dedicated to Chaos by Queensryche, which I think is easily the band's biggest turd. I mean, it's not their only turd, though. I mean, the 2000s were not very good for Queensryche. I mean, I thought I, thought I do like Try, but... Operation Mindcrime 2 is hot poo. I, I mean, I know I know that album has its share of fans, but I think it's hot poo by a landslide. It's just, it's just not good. I'm not I'm not even a big fan of Jeff's vocals on that album either. Sometimes he sounds okay on that album, while other times I'm just not really feeling his vocal performance. Then American Soldier, I thought was just 
boring and nothing super remarkable in terms of the songs themselves. Decent concept. I think the concept is kind of interesting, but at the same time, the songs themselves were not interesting, which is quite unfortunate. But Dedicated to Chaos just really shows the band uh, just seeing that they were just very low on ideas, throwing anything, throwing everything at the wall, seeing what sticks, and this album's just very lackluster and pretty uninspired, and you get, definitely get some of the band's worst songwriting, some of their worst material by far, especially when you got songs like Hotspot Junkie and Got It Bad and Big Noise, I mean, or What We Do, uh, W-O-T, What, I mean, it's like, really? But yeah, this would be one of the final albums uh, with Jeff and eventually the band would get their act together with the self-titled album in 2013 and they would go on to even do even better than that self-titled album with The Verdict and Digital Noise Alliance and of course Condition Human. But this album definitely, honestly, I'd, I'd say up there with Allude to Venom and Santa says maybe one of the worst metal albums of all time. I mean, again, it's pretty bad. I mean, 20, 2011 already was not a great year for metal, and this album definitely is one of the biggest turds of that year. But anyways, those are 10 bad metal albums from my collection. Let me know your thoughts on these albums in the comment section below. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Let me know if you like any, maybe any songs off these albums and all that good stuff. But anyways, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment and a like, subscribe, have a nice day and take care.